Hey everybody, it's Can Man with Become Sandman. Today we're gonna talk about everybody's second favorite mundane riff, Enter Sandman. Now, of course, it is very easy to talk all of the shit because, I mean, fucking everybody knows how to play this riff. Hi everyone, I'm an overweight Metallica purist, and this isn't real Metallica. They're nothing but a bunch of filthy sellouts. You're right, any riff that was written by the band Metallica is not written by the band Metallica. Makes perfect fucking sense. I think that Enter Sandman as a song gets way too much shit, but that's for a different video. Fuck it, it's not for a different video. I can explain it one sentence. It's just played too much. It's actually a very well-written rock song. It's just played way the hell too much and people start to dislike it. And no, it's not super complicated thrash. It's just good rock and roll. End of debate. Moving on. Obviously from the title of this video, I think this riff is important. No, it's not because of what this riff did for history. It is not what this riff did for metal. It's not because I even like this riff. Which for the record, yes, I very much like this riff. Does that make me a 4-4 butt snorkeling pleb? No. The reason why I think this riff is important is because of how it was created. For those of you that haven't seen this half interesting documentary about the Black Album, it actually gives some very valuable insights into the band during this period. One of which is that one of the most popular riffs in rock and roll and metal ever was written by none other than Kirk Hammett. Kirk wrote this riff at 3 in the morning, he brought it to Metallica, and unlike the rest of his riffs that go in the band scrapbook, they said, you know what? This doesn't sound like complete shit. Now, when Kirk first brought this riff to the band, it sounded like this. And according to Lars, he said, hey, that's like half-assed good. Let's make it actually good by taking this part, repeating it, and then putting a tail on it like this. and thus was born one of the most important riffs ever in rock history. So why is this important? When Kirk brought the riff, first of all, he was probably just happy that they didn't laugh in his face because that's probably what they normally did. He brought them a riff. It was an okay riff. It was pretty solid. And instead of them being like, you know what, it's not good enough, they were like, wait a second, let's work with this. Lars made a suggestion. Kirk took the suggestion instead of being a whiny little bitch, and it turned out to be one of the most important riffs in rock history. This is what we call being a good collaborator. Collaboration has its plus sides and its minus sides. Some people truly are geniuses and should not make compromises, but they are very few and far between. Even then, there's an argument to be made that they're collaborating all the time and they don't even realize it. For the most part, if you bring a bunch of people that all have talent at about the same level, you will do much better together than you would by yourselves, as long as there is chemistry. If I go and do a collaboration with Brad Paisley, it's probably gonna be a giant sack of shit. Not because Brad Paisley is a giant sack of shit, but because his style, my style, they do not fucking go together. And whatever he's working on, I will be completely unfulfilled. And whatever I'm working on, he'll probably have his mind explode. The chemistry is a mandatory, but so is the open-mindedness to take suggestion. If you really feel that strongly about something, you can stand your ground. But if the rest of the band outvotes you, you should probably just go along with it. There are rare instances where this is not the case. Another example being... Enter Sandman being the first single. That was Lars's decision. Of course, Lars also thought that Saint Anger album should be called Frantic, and that was just dumb. So as I say, it's most likely not going to be the case. Let me tell you about a very real story that happened to me as to why I always hold this to be one of the most important lessons I've learned. When I first moved here, I was one of two singers for a metal band. This should already give you an idea of what caliber we're working with. When I first came in, everyone in the band said that they were open to ideas and, and me coming up with my, my own vocal melodies, lyrics, and everything. Turns out they were not remotely as open as they said they were. I can remember one particular instance. It was a song called Song 4. Yes, Song 4. They had a structure for their song where it started out with the pre-chorus and then went to the chorus and then went to the first verse which is such a fucking awkward way of starting a song. Keeping in mind, I had never heard any lyrics or melody for this, so when I heard the song initially as just the music, I heard verse, pre-chorus, 
chorus. The thing that they had is their chorus, which I called the pre-chorus. I'm sorry if this is getting confusing. Had a very palpable rise in tension that was then let out into a big riff in what they called the core, the verse. Fuck. Was let out into a huge release of tension and a big riff that they called the verse, but that I thought was the chorus because you build up all of this tension, this rising action, and then it releases. That release is always your fucking chorus. And they completely fucked up their song by trying to stick to their own formula. I wrote an entire song's worth of lyrics and melody. I even come up, came up with a little like fast singing, almost like a, a metal rap type of thing, but it wasn't rapped, it was sang. I have absolutely zero doubt in my mind that the way that I was hearing this song was definitely more conducive to being sold. But they fucking wouldn't have anything of it. As a matter of fact, the band almost got into a fight over it just because they didn't like my Idea. Yes, I was holding very firm on this idea because I was thinking to myself, you have a huge missed opportunity in front of you. Your pre-chorus has no rising tension. Your chorus is rising tension when it really should be a catharsis of all the tension we just built up. And your, cor and your verse is wasting all of this exploded tension on something that has no repeating melody or lyrics. The part that people will be remembering the most about your song is the one that's being ignored the most. It's fucking stupid. And yes, if you're watching this, I'm saying that that was a fucking stupid idea and you had a huge missed opportunity on your hands. Long story short, I was with this band for almost an entire year and we never played one fucking show. So I left. They winded up getting another singer who is very talented, definitely a better singer than me, and he could also do growls and screams. But they made him sing their own shitty fucking lyrics with their shitty fucking melodies. I went, I supported them because they're friends of mine. And also to show that I have no hard feelings, which I still don't have hard feelings, I just honestly believe it was a stupid fucking decision. The songs lacked any very distinct, easy to grab onto melody, and that made the whole thing kind of feel like Eh. It didn't help that one of the guitar players was rushing through a number of the parts because he was nervous. So why am I telling you all of this, and why am I shitting all over these guys? I'm not really shitting that much. I'm just being Mike the Music Snob on a fucking TV show. Because I had presented them with an idea that verifiably, and I mean this, verifiably by any professional songwriting standard would have been a better way of looking at that song that they had already written literally just by renaming the parts and it was so mind-bending to them and they were so latching on to these things that they had written they couldn't bear to part with it they couldn't bear to fucking part with it that is actually the event that prompted me to start my own youtube channel i have a hundred thousand subscribers plus that band doesn't fucking exist anymore i made myself a promise that I would not be creatively controlling like that. I also have enough wisdom and self-awareness to know that I'm not talented enough to be a genius that dictates everything. I need people that are at least as creative and talented as me, if not more so in specific areas, to enrich what I do. I really hope I am doing that with this new band. I think that's the direction we're headed. And if it is, man, be ready for some fucking badass tunes. I promise you that. That is a music snob 100% guarantee. fucking T. So the moral of the story is, you're not that fucking good hotshot. Know what your worth is, know what you're working with, but at the same point, you're not that good. And for those of you that are gonna try and throw this back in my face, so you're just talking about how good you were. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm fucking, and that's why I'm yielding to my keyboard player, Jesse, on his ideas. Because I know how fucking talented that man is. He's ridiculously talented. It would be a sin for me to try and trample on that creativity, thinking that my I fucking knew better. You're comparing B tier to A tier, man. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know your wonderful thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, if you like what I do on this channel, supporting me on Subscribestar is the only way to keep this channel going. And you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Become the Night. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Rock on!